you guys came to Hollywood was did Hollywood call on you or did you guys come out to Hollywood to try to make a career here? Well, I recently just moved to LA. I've been here for three months and that's something I've always wanted to do. I was six years old when I first decided I wanted to be an actress. I've shot a whole bunch of movies in South Africa. So they can find me on my arm right now. Stop. Um, and, uh, sorry, I can't <laughs> um, But not a lot of these books they cost out in South Africa. Dangerous, however, I got hold of the script and I waited and campaigned really hard and rule took a liking to me and said, this was a girl. Amazing. <laughs> it cost me a lead in the film of the week, but I've been here for three months. I was there for a week and I got cast on an HBO series called Fame with Pal. So I hear that's not not like average uh, practice for people to come out and book something so fast. I feel very grateful and uh, it was fun for me to say this is what I'm meant to be doing. I, um, I, I did a movie, I think that I mean, I kind of movie I don't know how much that was a, um, it was kind of a message set about drug you know, rehabilitation. I was a drug dealer. A drug, uh, yeah, I had a drug habit. And I was, I was addicted to speedballs, which is like a pretty heavy drug. And I had a lot of times did a good review, and I just said to them, you know, everyone around me at the time, I think if I'm going to do this, I'm going to follow this. Like, I came here and got home in the audition process a few years ago, or maybe 10 years ago now, but then uh, just going to the film industry, which is what I always wanted to do. You know? Okay. And tell us about how you guys got cast in Death Race 2. Well, it was already um, discovered that the film would be shot in South Africa in Cape Town. Like I said previously, I heard about the film, got hold of the script, went in an audition for the lead role. Rule really liked me and uh, campaigned to discover it on my behalf. He did the personal producers and it was decided that I was going to play Katrina Banks. Very exciting. I, had, I just got this phone call from the uh, center of all my agents and I had them sent over the script so I sent it and I liked it. Um, and Will and I were going to do a, a project previously a few years ago and the producers wanted somebody else in the role that Will wanted me to play. But he said this time, uh, I want to get the script to Luke Wilson if he likes it, then great. And uh, I loved it and that was the end of it really. We negotiated uh, around about Christmas time last year. So it was a very, you know, it was, I, I read it, loved it, and then found out that, you know, Tanny was going to be a part of it, and then Sean Payne, and then that thing, and uh, Danny Trey. I was like, shit, this is, this is getting more exciting by the day. So I was very, I feel very glad to be a part of it, too. Okay, great. So now tell us about your characters in the movie. Um, Katrina Banks is an ex-military sniper that's joined in jail for killing Mr. Perry officer. You don't see why that happens, but... In the backstory, she's egg raped, I suppose, or drug raped, and um, so she kills a man and she says she owns up to it because she wants to uh, show that it was the actual truth and she's an honorable woman. And um, yeah, she's a, she's a badass, very, very sexy, and uh, it comes across like she can take care of herself. She falls in love with Luke's character, Carl Lucas, and she um, can never get caught. And uh, my character was, he basically works for a guy called Marcus Kane, and um, he, uh, we've been working together 20 years, we're like brothers and family, and but I work for him, and I can facilitate a number of different things he needs for jobs, whether it be driving a car, or robbing a bank, taking care of business, collecting funds, but my one thing is, in car Lucas just said he likes things done properly, quickly, and primarily nobody gets hurt. I don't know the people that might have messed with our organization, so then he does something that changed his life. He kills a police officer, which is the first person he shot in that line of business, and it's because he compromised his work ethic and work with people that were not up to the standard that he only works at, and he pays a massive price for that. He goes to prison, as he should, and he finds himself slammed back in the middle of something that he can fight, which is good for the first kind of side of the story, which is the death match. And then they find out he's a good driver, so he's good fodder for death race, and then he ends up being probably the best driver in the history of the sport. And then he becomes Frankenstein, and I guess he's born at that point because he's a commodity to the, to the franchise. So whether the real Frankenstein inevitably gets killed or not, like he's still in the state of movie, which is technically now the second movie, uh, they don't want the Frankenstein to die because he brings in ratings. And so uh, being Frankenstein is most definitely a curse, for sure.
Okay, and this is actually the prequel to the other, the first movie, right? That's correct. Okay, and did you guys do your, how much of the stunts did you guys do? Well, I took, I kicked the crap out of three convicts and uh, I get thrown out of the car and I climb on top of the car and do some serious machine gun shooting and a lot of it was shot on green screen uh, just for the practicality of doing all the close-up shots. But yeah, I got my hands pretty dirty. Luke does all his own driving. Unbelievable. And my, I come from a family where my dad uh, used to race cars. So I, I was really nervous when I knew that I would be getting in a car with an actor. And I was like, like, can you drive the car? And it was the very first day. I felt very at ease. Did you drive very well? Yeah, no, I'm also driving a teddy in the car. She's not really afraid of anything. So as much as she is concerned, we don't need someone every time she was kicking out the door after the line, she's got the thing itself. But yeah, I did a lot of driving and uh, and all the fighting. All of the entire fight team is me doing that with a double to any of that. I like to run stuff that the producers can help me get a bit of training and I can get prepared for that. Any role I do, I like to try and do what I'm supposed to do. So I believe it and the audience believes it and then everyone's happy. Okay. Um, can you guys tell us about your other upcoming projects? Um, I've just finished a film with John Cleese in South Africa. It's called Spud. It's about a boy. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's about a story of a boy. Um, I was like online in boarding school. I play a drama teacher that has an affair with a, a school boy. Kind of uh, controversial, and John Cleese plays drunk in the English teacher. I've just finished shooting a 13, uh, 13 anthology episode uh, series with uh, HBO called Fem to Tell, where I play a mysterious man killer. Um, very exciting, it's coming out next year, mate. And next year, in March, I shoot another film about the story of young Pablo Picasso. It's a French aristocrat that gets in between public and his best friend. All exciting stuff. Music, what are you doing? <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a movie called uh, Exodus of Charlie Wright with uh, Aidan Quinn and Andy Garcia coming out in about a week. Um, I've got a movie that Tekken's finally coming out in the US, uh, theatrically and on DVD. Um, I've got a movie called uh, Blood Out with 50 Cent about Quinn Kilmer where I play, I guess, the hero again in that movie, which is about drug culture and a gang. I play a police officer who's brother's murdered and I decided to take the investigation into my own hands and find out who killed my brother. Um, I've got a movie that I'm producing called The Shanghai High that we film in Hong Kong in March and I have a movie called The Cure which is a kind of a story about a jazz musician set in the 50s. I play a trumpet player who falls in love with a black girl in the 50s and makes a relationship and drugs and kind of like a musician and you know it's a beautiful story that kind of winds its way through America and Europe. And, and a thriller called Press which I've just completed in Canada. So quite, quite a busy year this year, really. Okay, well, congratulations, you guys. Um, can you tell me uh, where people can find you online? Do you have official websites or on Facebook? Uh, mine's going to get updated as soon as I can get home, but it's hannaphoenix.co.za. Uh, mine's called uh, www.hannaphoenix.co.za. Uh, Facebook, it's Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, one last question to Tanit. I heard there's a rumor on the internet that you're supposed to be cast as the next Wonder Woman. Do you know about that? <laughs> I've gone and seen all the key, uh, all the key, all the key pr um, producers from Warner Brothers, and I can happily say that I'm in the running. There are a few girls that are going into audition. I'd love to see the director, but the one producer the next South African, so crossing fingers and toes, I have favor there. <laughs> okay, well. I think she would, I think she would, because I, I love this girl, but I also think she'd be a bad one, I wonder if she could be able to be capable and sexy and all that stuff, and, you know, she's a wholesome girl too, so I think she can do all that. Danny Trejo has been campaigning, campaigning on my behalf for a while now, so I think she can call me dinner, mate. <laughs> well, you can, you can add me to the campaigning, too. I'll, I'll campaign for you, too. Thank you. So thank you, you guys, for the interview. And, uh, you know, good luck with the movie. My name is Samara Riviera with VivaLaRiviera.com. Awesome. Thank you so much.